Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Bring it up, Bob. So you won't bend down. <laughs> okay. I'll bring it higher. <laughs> How's that? I've got a story to tell you today. Good story. It's a good story. It's about Jesus. Hallelujah. And it's interesting. It's about a book in the Bible that is, is not very well covered by most of the churches. It's the book of Revelation. It's called The Revelation. It's a revelation. It's a testimony of Jesus given to John by the angel Gabriel and it's recorded in the last book of the Bible. It's a wonderful book. It's a book just telling you about the future, the past and the present. And what it is, it's very interesting to have a revelation of the mysteries of God. They're all involved in this book. And it's good. I'm going to be reading uh, from Revelation number four today. Uh, I've covered in a paper last week uh, the earlier revelations about the messages to the churches, the seven churches in Asia. And today I'm going to be reading from Revelation 4. And this is what it says. After this I looked and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, come up here. So what that really is talking about is the rapture of the church or the lifting up of the church. And that's what happens is they get a, uh, the church gets a call to go up to be with Jesus in the air. And it says here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the spirit and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Carnelian, a rainbow, a rainbow resembling an emerald encircled the throne. Surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones and seated on them were 24 elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. And from the throne came uh, flashes of lightning rumblings and peals of thunder before the throne seven lamps were blazing these are the seven spirits of god also before the throne there was what looked like a sea of glass clear as crystal in the center around the throne were four living creatures and they were covered with eyes in front and in back the first living creature was like a lion the second was like an ox, and the third has a face like a man, and the fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under the wings. Day and night they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And so whatever, whenever the living creatures give glory to, and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay down their crowns before the throne and say, you are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they were created and have their being so that's the word of god i'm just going to comment on these aspects of that uh, the phrases that i've just read it see as a scene in heaven that takes place at the closing of the church age and before the tribulation so verses one and two it says that it's a new day for mankind it has dawned and John describes the experience of a rapture of church before the tribulation and so I've read about that and so what it is is the sea of glass uh, I, I'll talk about that in a moment uh, and it says in verse 5 it talks about the seven lamps and the seven spirits of God 
because there's only one Spirit of God that operates in many ways and the number seven denotes perfection. So that's what the Bible is talking about. But verse six talks about the sea of glass and it symbolizes a group of people that are holy, the church, and the Old Testament saints. So they're the ones that are going to go up to be with Jesus when he comes in the air. And finally, verses 7 and 11, uh, they talks about the four beasts, they're angels, and all and four represents harmony, and they, and they lead an audible, order, orderly worship of God. So it's very important to know that this is going on in the unseen world, that's the heavenly realm. This is what's transpiring. And so I'm going to be uh, sharing more about this next week. I'll be telling you more about what's to happen. And there's some like, very exciting things to hear. But for today, I'll keep it short because we've got others want to share a message as well. But the important thing is I always conclude with uh, the gospel because you need to know why we're doing this and it's really to do with where you'll go when you die. And that means is if you, if you die in the Lord, you go to be with him in heaven. But if you don't, there's another place and you don't want to go there. And so what the Bible says is this, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So that's the promise of salvation for those who believe and are baptized. So, and uh, the important thing about this is that, that God loves us and because of his love we're drawn to him. So God bless you all and thank you.